Hi friends! Today is an exciting video as we will be covering Fude Beauty's top selling inexpensive brushes. Many of you had asked that I showcase my favorite inexpensive brushes from Fude Beauty or any online retailer that sells Fude, Fude being brush in Japanese. And Fude Beauty was kind enough to send these selects as well as other brushes that I had presented in my previous Fude Beauty videos, which showcase each brand separately. We have a slew of different brushes from face, cheek to eyes. And with that said, all time stamps will be down below with the actual brush. If you want to quickly scan the description box, not only will I have that time stamp, but also the price and what the brush is made out of. So you just have a mini catalog, if you will, to run through if you wanted to revisit this video and not sit through the whole thing. Also, Fude Beauty is running two giveaways one being their makeup challenge inspired by their Sakura season, which is this month's theme. The challenge is to create your favorite pink inspired makeup look, which I did today as well, and also share your favorite pink brushes that you might have in your collection. The prize is an Ihiro Makie GP1 small Sakura brush that has the beautiful lacquer Sakura design on the handle. The details for that challenge will be on their website. I will make sure to post both giveaway links down below. The second giveaway is their Sakura Season Brush Survey. The survey will ask what your favorite pink Sakura decorated Fude brush is, as well as your favorite pink makeup products to use with your Fude. Prizes include for this giveaway $100 Fude Beauty Voucher, a Bishiro Powder Foundation Brush, the PFF01, as well as the Nakamura Seisakusho Fude Beauty Kiryu Sakura Brush Case. Both giveaways close on March 31st and both winners will be announced on April 2nd. So if you want to partake in those two giveaways, again, I will have the links down below so you can check out the terms and conditions, what you need to do to partake in either challenge or both. Why not? I think it'll be fun. Maybe it'll inspire you to create more pink inspired looks, not only for March, but for the rest of the season with the pastels coming out, you know, go wild. I have different brushes for each category, right? This is not to make you buy each and every one. Again, these are their top selling brushes. Doesn't mean that you actually have to get these specifically. I will also post their under $100 or $200 sets that they would recommend. There are so many brushes in the Fude lineup, right? So again, these are just their top selling ones. I will also share other brushes that I feel are inexpensive as well that are not necessarily top selling, but what I think are worth a look at and worth the buy if you are in the market for that specific one. For powder face brushes under $55, and typically powder brushes can run very high, specifically because if they have a gray squirrel bristle type, if they're tightly packed with that bristle, that will then increase the price of the brush as well as the wood used for the handle. And all those variables definitely contribute to the price. First one I want to present is the Hokuro face brush GC7 from their Sora series. This retails for $39 and it is made with gray squirrel. Gray squirrel is ideal for dry, sensitive skin types. If you want a silky feeling brush, then gray squirrel is the way to go. However, if you are more on the oily part of the spectrum in terms of skin type, maybe gray squirrel won't be as practical as it is more delicate than goat hair. You can only use it with powder products and it's not going to have as a robust product pick up like goat hair will. But again, if you meet all those conditions in terms of you finding a very soft silky brush that is under $55, the Sora Series GC7 has a beautiful angle here. Although small, the bristles are long enough to create a nice splay on the, on the cheeks where you could use it for beautiful blush application as well as highlight. Now, typically people might reach for a tapered design that it fits well on the cheek bones here, but I think the surface area 
is appropriate enough to place highlight here if not on the surface of the brush perhaps just the side i think that'll be a, a fine route to go also great for loose powder application again the splay and silky touch of gray squirrel makes it seamless to apply and quick to get the product on without you taking forever and the angle again ideal for hollow of the cheek application a softer uh, delivery of blush if you don't want a lot of product at the first go if you want to build the intensity and the angled shape allows for that control and once all cheek products have been applied you can then use the same brush to run over everything so it could look blurred and smooth next up we have the koyuro vivid series v1 powder brush retails for $52 and it is made of goat hair. Now goat hair in comparison to squirrel hair, a little more versatile in terms of the products you can use it with. Powder products as well as cream, although this being a powder brush, I don't think you will find yourself applying a cream product unless let's say the say a natural cream bronzer product, you can lightly pull the brush across the product and maybe place it on the hollows of your cheeks. But judging from the brush size and shape, Pinched Ferrell here is going to have a flat side design with that slight taper. And although pretty big, because of the taper, I think ideal for blush application. The slight taper here will make it great for bronzer. In fact, I find many makeup wearers prefer a bigger brush for bronzer application. It delivers that beautiful hazed out bronzed effect that would look more precise and maybe sculpted with a smaller brush. And because of the bigger brush size, great for loose or pressed powder application where it'll be very quick with that application. Or maybe you need a light dosing of powder foundation. Now, goat hair is not as silky and soft as gray squirrel, but it does have more product pickup and will, again, distribute more product on the first application. So just some variables to consider when deciding which one you should go for. Next up, we have the Chikohoro Powder brush from their red regular series the rrp3 this retails for 38 dollars and it is sokoho goat hair i adore the longer bristles on this chikohoro brush as well as the round ferrule you have a dome shape here and what this i feel is ideal for considering again that we have the sokoho goat great for powders only since this is dyed lovely for loose powder application it has a very soft silky feel feel on the skin softer than the koyuro brush so if you wanted something less expensive than even this and you don't mind the different shape well let's go over the different tasks shall we blush amazing although a bigger brush than maybe a smaller cheek one great if you can just place the product perhaps half on the surface area of the brush head and take it where you need on the apples of the cheeks. You could also take some contour or bronzer on the corner of the brush, swipe it along the hollows. But this brush design specifically, I feel ideal for finishing. It's just so fluttery, soft, and lightweight on the skin. And the splay is fantastic. So again, quick, loose, or pressed powder application to set your foundation or after all products have been applied, the wispy, just whipped silk-like nature of this brush makes it easy to buff and finish with. Because of the longer bristle, it's not dense. Therefore, it will not disturb your makeup. It will not move it around. In fact, it will take away any excess from your skin that will leave behind a beautiful blurred look and therefore the skin will not look overwhelmed with product. And the last brush we have from our powder category is from Hokuro, the PF5 Moe Round Face Brush. This retails for $39 and also made of Sokoho Goat Hair. One of my most favorite brushes compared to the Chikohoro one, this has a little more bristle and it comes up with a more pronounced taper here. But again, a round brush, I think ideal for several tasks. This has more bristles, so it's gonna feel a little more stiff 
as well as have more feedback when you press it against the skin. And more bristles mean more product pickup. Perhaps you like powder foundation, and if you want a more moderate application, not heavy, not light, just in the middle, then the Hokuro brush, I think, will deliver great coverage. Nice for blush, again, because of the round shape, but I would prefer something like the Hokuro Sora series brush because it is smaller. That's just my preference, but you can get away with blush application using the Moe powder brush as well as bronzer. Again, with more bristle, you will have more product pickup. So perhaps you're using a, a gel -A type of a bronzing product. This is going to pick up a lot more than let's say a squirrel brush will or one with made with less bristles, right? So some considerations there. I wouldn't use this for finishing. I think it a little too dense for that. Although you can get away with finishing if you hold the brush at the end of the handle to just not have as much pressure on the skin. Other than that, I think a great all-around powder brush for loose press powder, especially powder foundation application to get nice coverage there. Into liquid foundation brushes. My favorite category. Under $30, we first have the Hokuro Slanted Foundation BZ2 brush. Retails for $29, and this is made with Sokoho goat hair, undyed as you see. So you can use this with liquid or cream products. And to compare to the BZ1, this is its bigger counterpart. And I think you can immediately assume that with the smaller brush head, Yes, great for foundation application. It might take you more time considering it is smaller, but the wedge allows for really nice splay so you can whip it around in a circular fashion that will make for quick foundation application as opposed to the rounder design that you could probably pounce around and also swirl. But if you want quick foundation application with the smaller brush head, I would suggest the swirl and twirl or the pull down. You can rely on a paint down type of a technique to get the foundation on. But ideal for concealer application, right? Because of the smaller brush head, you can then get into the nooks and crannies of your complexion application in ways that perhaps you couldn't use with a bigger brush. So it is smaller, some things for you to consider, but I think this is a great size for not only complexion tasks, but cheek ones as well. Punch in some cream bronzer or contour, punch on some cream blush. Because of the flat surface, I would understand if maybe you wanted a dome or perhaps a more tapered surface. There are so many shapes out there. And again, there are a lot more inexpensive brushes that come in different sizes. So you don't have to commit to this one, but this is a great buy if you do have a budget and you wanted to buy a Soko Goat foundation brush that can be used with creams and or liquids. Now the star of the show is definitely the Mizuho CMP 510. Synthetic retails for $29. One of the best-selling foundation brushes of all time on Fude Beauty. Soft and round, moderately shaped, not too big, not too small, great for pouncing, pulling down, swirling, twirly. A little big for concealer, but you could get away with it. Maybe you use your fingertips for the innermost corners for under the eyes and you use the rest of your brush to finish off the blend. Fantastic for bronzer. I mean, great to just place the right amount of product there. And for cream cheek, Police. This is one of my most favorite liquid foundation brushes of all time. It's just a, a sturdy construction. It lasts forever. It's synthetic. So if you're a working professional, you can wash synthetic bristles a lot more often than you can natural bristles. Natural bristles, you have to chill with the wash frequency because overwashing could damage the bristles and shorten the lifespan of those brushes. But with synthetic, you could go ham with the washing, you'll be okay. Now into the cheek product category and beautiful brush to kick this off. This is the Chikohoro PS2 cheek brush from their Passion series. Retails for $33 and it is made with Sokoho goat hair. The Passion series overall from Chikohoro, I think a great set or just a great line that delivers a, a comprehensive offering of brush shapes and sizes, but it doesn't break the bank. And the aesthetic I think is lovely. You 
have the shiny ferrule with the brushed metallic handle, a slight groove here that just makes it comfortable to handle. And you can't go wrong with a round cheek brush, okay? Dyed goat hair, versatile to use. Primarily, we'll have to use it with powder products, but considering the size of this brush, people had often presented a very good tip when budgeting for food day. You don't necessarily need a designated powder brush and designated cheek brush. That's just how they're labeled. You can get away with powder tasks using a cheek brush, and cheek brushes typically are less expensive than bigger powder brushes. For myself, I consider to have like a, a moderately shaped face is not too big, not too small. I could use a cheek brush to apply my loose powder, my pressed powder, get it on to set my foundation quickly. I could then use it to apply my bronzer, my cheek products. And this has really nice flow. It's not too dense like the Hokuro brush here. There's more movement here because it's not as dense and I think that's an ideal application for a powder blush just because you get your swirl and twirl on without disturbing your foundation. And why not just apply some powder highlighter here on the edge of the brush right there on your cheekbone and I think that'll be a precise enough application even with a round cheek brush. Next we have the Bishoro CHC cheek brush from their Cherry series retails for $29 and it is made of Sokoho goat hair. A little stiffer than what we just saw from the Chikohoro Passion series, but it is flat on both sides. The advantage you have with using a cheek brush that's flat on both sides with a slight taper is that it's great to pounce blush on. You can get the powder product on one side, pounce it on, and then use the edge of the brush to blur the edges and get a nice spread there on the cheeks. More precise than a rounder brush. Again, because of the flat side and that taper, you can wedge it into the hollows and then again use the edge of the brush to blur the edges and create that seamless gradation of color. Also ideal for loose and pressed powder, it has a lighter touch. Again, you will get more of a silky feel if you apply the brush closer to the tapered side on your face, right? So you're gonna get a nice swirl and silky feel even though it's Sokoho goat hair and not gray squirrel because of the brush's design. When you hit the face with the edge of the brush, it has a wispy feel to it. It's not aggressive in, in terms of not so tightly packed here at the end of the brush. In fact, because of that construction, great for finishing. If you just wanted to do a quick go around after everything has been applied, then you can use the Bishoto CHC for that task as well. Next up from Koyuro, their Yoshiki series. This is the Y2 Psycho Goat Brush, retails for $35. Now, just from the looks of it, this is a tighter packed brush, a little stiffer in feel. It's not going to have the same flow as the Passion series brush. This is a little more direct in its application and because it is undyed goat hair, you can also use this with cream products. Some makeup wearers find they want a more direct brush when using cream products. They don't want it to splay or they just want a little more control when it comes to the application. This is going to be a little more stiff than squirrel, but you can't use squirrel hair with cream or liquid products. So that is the advantage of using a brush like this. Again, with undyed goat hair, round ferrule, slight taper, mostly dome. Again, you can see here, it's a little more stiff, but I like that. I like a smaller cheek brush. If you want more product application from the first pickup, right? That's what's going to occur when using a more dense brush with shorter bristles, again, as opposed to the Passion series brush or even the Hokuro Sora series brush with great squirrel. So you just have to decide what your favorite makeup products are, what you apply the most, and I think that will dictate what your choice should be from this lineup. Also great for a cream or liquid foundation application. If you're one just to have like a light layer of coverage, this is great to whip on 
in a, a very lightweight fashion that product you don't have to overload the bristles with cream or liquid in fact i would suggest that you apply the product first on the back of your hand or on a palette just take quick strokes on and then take it on your skin and it's going to leave a beautiful natural finish without looking heavy and again you can use this with a lot of mediums and the fact that it's 35 dollars i think a great price that will cover many tasks in your makeup routine next up we have the kiroedo miyabi cheek brush 35 dollars and this is pine squirrel now maybe not as versatile as the cheek brushes we previously saw this is very flat on both edges has a slight taper here perhaps you can get away with a few okay let's say you have powder highlighter fantastic for that small enough to get it right on the cheekbones also fantastic for under the eye powder application light dosing a powder where you typically would apply it perhaps you're one that doesn't apply loose powder all over you just want to pinpoint those areas and because of the flat construction great to just get powder on the areas that need the attention as well as some contouring now because the bristles are long they're not short you have really nice flow on the skin so it will be a direct a more direct application here but then you start to swirling and twirling and it will evenly distribute the product fantastic for blush just whip it on here in a fashion that kind of has like that watercolor effect on the cheeks so although the shape might be limited in the respect where you're used to a round powder brush or a slanted cheek brush whatever your makeup style is or maybe you can adjust it a little bit experiment with different techniques that you wouldn't otherwise use but are forced to if you choose to work with a different shape that you haven't prior nice for pinpointing maybe areas that need more coverage let's say you use a powder foundation and you just need a little more application there you apply it on the chin around the jawline however you go about it again despite its smaller size i think the miyabi brush is quite versatile still and lastly from our cheek category we have the bishoro chhc highlight cheek brush from the Shetty series, Sokoho Goat Hair, and this retails for $21. This is more tapered than its counterpart. Here you have it flat on both sides, a much bigger brush, still with Sokoho Goat Hair, precise for highlight application here on the cheekbones, still wonderful for bronzer. Maybe it won't have that, that hazy distribution like you would get from the CHC, but the CH hc is more precise in that fashion perhaps you prefer that because it does have the tear drop shape nice taper here comes to a point so you can still swirl and twirl in a way that will distribute the product it won't look as direct on the first application because of the construction of the design you do have that option to get your swirl and twirl on fantastic for blush it is a smaller brush but i think it has moderate splay not as much as a, a gray squirrel maybe would or one with less bristles but you can still use the tip of the brush to widen that surface area of application if you wish to and great for under the eyes because of the taper it fits beautifully here under the lash line and on the inner corner and for pinpoint powder application you can definitely maybe just take that between the brow center of the forehead on the the inner part of your face and not have it all over because maybe you're drier on the perimeters and you don't need powder there anyway great all-around brush great price i love it for all those tasks and you don't have to break the bank eye brushes okay all under 20 dollars let's start with the koido brushes from the yoshiki line the y4 and the y5 the y4 is 16 dollars the y5 14 and both are made with psycho goat hair now when you see these pencil brushes you might ask yourself why would i need that well it all depends on your makeup application maybe you like that precise application of shadow under your lash line you don't like it to be hazy so you would therefore need a smaller brush maybe you like a even smaller brush for inner corner highlight or perhaps something that will slide along the lash line 
for that shadow wing or maybe you place a cold liner on the lash line and you need something to smudge it because of this taper it has a very silky touch to the skin and that's not going to pull the lid it won't skip it will have just a very smooth delivery which i think makes it easier for one who may might be uncomfortable for more precise tasks on the eyes or one that likes to do cut crease work this is so silky that it just slides along your crease so perhaps you like to apply a pencil there and you need a small brush that's going to get into that fold it's very dense here at the base but comes to a nice taper that's going to have great product pickup but then beautiful glide here on the application another shadow liner option is from bishiro again from their shari series the chsl shadow liner brush weasel hair $14 I'm sure you can detect what this will be great for the liner the liner sketch unless you're super good at makeup pro or or maybe you just have this amazing talent to get the line on the first go straight along your lash line is mm. I know I sketch it on first I don't worry about how even it is and then I use the shadow liner brush and that will allow me to clean up the application and the bristles stay together they don't separate so the tighter bundle will allow for easier application and that it will appear smooth easier to sketch along maybe you like to take a dark shadow and use the punch method so you stamp on the color instead of pulling it across but the thin shadow liner shape will allow for that to happen. Again, great if you rely on that technique. And because it's weasel, it's gonna pick up great product on the first dip. It's not gonna be as soft as the goat hair or squirrel hair. So just keep that in mind. If you have very sensitive eyes, maybe this won't be for you, but there are a lot of shadow liner brushes that are not necessarily made of weasel hair that are much softer if you want to check out those options we love a blender chikohoto classic gsn 10 blending brush 19 dollars goat hair listen you can't go wrong with a tapered blending brush and the longer handle from the gsn series is meant to be used by professionals but i think can be used by anyone so you will feel further away from your eyes but you just can't go wrong with this shape. It's not too big, not too small, right dead in the center in terms of who can use it. If you have bigger eyes, it won't take you forever to get the blend on. If you have smaller eyes, it won't take the color too far up close to the brow and will still fit nicely into your crease. So this is a great all around shape. Again, just whipping color through the crease or even taking color on one side of the brush across the lid. And you can't go wrong with this aesthetic. The white pearl handle with the gold ferrule and the crimp design here. This is just classic Chikohoto. Every time I see a brush like this, I'm like, oh. I just want them all. And why not? If you like a light serving of highlighter, you can just tap it on here or maybe just tap on some loose powder of the very inner parts of the lower lash line. So I can go on and on about how great the GSN 10 is, but I'm sure you can already tell, okay, with the shape, with the price and you're fine with Sokoho Goat, you can't go wrong. Next, we have Koyudo from their Vivid series, the 03 eyeshadow brush, $19 goat hair. Now, very dense here at the base, but a very flexible tip. So when you pick up product, you'll pick up a good amount, but the application is so lightweight and smooth. And I think the size is great for like that one and done swipe over. And because it is undyed goat hair, let me hear it. Cream eyeshadows. If you're a one and done beauty enthusiast, you just need that one color across the lid and you gotta be done. You gotta get out the door. Then the brush is wide enough so you can get the color primarily on the lid, but then use it to lightly blend the edges through your crease. Also getting nice color here on the lash line, tight to it, more precise. If you don't want that hazy blended out look on your lash line. And dare I say, really nice for the inner corner. It's still smooth enough that I feel delicate to apply color there on your inner corner without sensitizing your eyes also fantastic to apply liner if you like to use shadow to apply intensity on the lash line 
the tip of the brush doesn't splay out and that you can get enough precision there for that task. So this is a multi-function brush for your entire eye look. If you're minimalist in that approach, you're only applying at most two shades, two shades. You don't need the whole palette on your eyelids and you just need that brush to cover enough tasks so that your eye look looks complete and finished. It's a good one. Next up, the Chikohoto G for $22 Gray Squirrel Shader Brush. Now, Gray Squirrel, more expensive than Goat, softer, but could only be used with powder products. So that is the limitation. This is a great shape in that it's small enough for precise lid application, but the bristles are long enough to allow for great blending. Once you take the lid color on, you turn the brush on its side to get it swirling and twirling, but precise enough for inner corner highlights, great for lower lash line shading. You can turn the brush on its side if you want a heavier dosing of color there. If you want to tap on more color on the outer lid, I had said this before, fluffy shaders, although I wouldn't consider this fluffy, I still wouldn't consider this a fluffy shader. There are other shader brushes that have more bristle that I think are great for blending, but this fantastic to maybe place color on the outer lid, and then you take another blending brush that you perhaps already have in your collection to throw the excess through your crease. Again, great all around brush. This is from the G series as opposed to the GSN. You have the longer handle, the crimps on the ferrule, shorter handle from the G series. I'm a sucker for shorter brushes for the eyes. I feel I have more control and maybe one who is not comfortable applying eyeshadow will then feel less intimidated using a shorter handled brush that they feel closer to the eyes. Maybe they have a little more control there. It definitely is up to you and experimenting with both brush handle lengths, but the shorter handle I think has those advantages. And this being gray squirrel is not going to pick up as much as goat. So if you're looking for that one and done eyeshadow application, soft on the lids, you have very sensitive eyelids, you have very sensitive skin there, this is great. Can't beat it, especially Gray Squirrel for that price. Good pick. Next up, we have the Mizuho CMP 527 Gray Squirrel and Pony Mix Brush. Retails for $18. Now, with the inclusion of pony hair, it's not going to feel as silky as a brush that's exclusively made with all Gray Squirrel. But the advantage is to having a mix like this is that you have great pickup from the Pony and a smooth blend from the Gray Squirrel. Fantastic all around tapered shape, very much like the GSN brush here. I think the GSN brush has less bristle, touch a bit shorter. This has a little more go around on the blend. I think it's fantastic, slightly stiffer if perhaps you're working with more stubborn formulas in the matte department that needs a little more like, a little more push on the skin. Then the Mizuho brush, a great all around blender that's not very expensive. And lastly from Mizuho, the MB125, $23. Now more expensive than what we just saw, but this is all gray squirrel. Compared to the G brush from Chikohoro, this has a little more movement than this one here. This is a little more stiff and direct in application. This has a little more flow, and you can see there's a little more fluff there as well from the profile view. I love brushes like this because it gives you, it targets in between, right? Not so hazy, but not so precise either. So if you want that lower lash line application that doesn't look super precise, but just enough blend, and it not travel down too far. This is a great brush. As I had described with the G4, packing on more color on the outer lid and then taking the tip of the brush to fluff it through the crease is a great transition to make with the same brush. Lid application, amazing. Maybe not as precise as the Koido brush, 
this is going to give a little more on the lid but if you just want a light dose you don't want it to be oversaturated with product then this is a great brush again it's all gray at squirrel not going to pick up as much as goat fantastic for the inner corner if you want more of a fluffed out look for your highlight then this is a great choice also if you want to fluff on perhaps a matte light color for your brow bone or perhaps just to give a finishing blend to the edges of your crease color a great little brush and yes it's over $20 although the category started under 20 I think if you're looking for an all gray squirrel brush of that size it might be worth the extra three just saying. Now from Koyuro, we have the Yoshiki Y8 brush. This is black Tanuki Raccoon hair, retails for $20. A lot stiffer than many pencil brushes you might have encountered. And if you're wondering what well, I'm gonna use that with, great for lower lash line application. It mimics that of a calligraphy brush. It's very silky at the very tip of the brush. So dense here, but lots of flexibility near the tip. What I love this for is inner corner highlight because of, again, that silky feel on the skin, you can carve around the inner part of your eye. Fantastic also if you don't wanna block out the entire outer lid with a more intense color, but you just wanna whisk on a darker color here on the corner of your lash line, then the shape of this brush allows for that because it's stiffer at the tip, so it will keep the color intact and not allow it to spread too far out. So this is more of a specific brush, but if you are a fan of raccoon hair, if you've experienced it and you find that you like it for your eye brushes, then you can consider this pick. Also from Koyuro, but from their Kakishibu Zomi line, 05, $22, Psycho Goat Hair, their flat shader brush. Flat shader brushes are very much welcomed in anyone's brush collection. It's dyed, so I would primarily use this with powder products. You can see just from the shape alone, fantastic for lid application if you have smaller eyes then you can place it right here without it traveling too far up ideal for lower lash line application more so to keep the color tighter to the lash line as well as inner corner highlights and then you can use the tip of the brush to smudge your liner or use it to apply a darker shadow here on the lash line if you prefer to go the shadow liner route. And also from the Kakishibuzomi line, Koyudo 06 pencil brush, $18. Also Psycho Goat Hair. Now compared to the Yoshiki brush, you see that this is more domed. It's rounder and more bristles here at the tip versus the Yoshiki brush and that will then allow for a little more product spreading a little more product application so if you want your liner to spread a little bit then you will use this brush you could also tap on more color here on the outer part of your lash line maybe take a little more here on the outer third of your lower lash line perfect for inner corner highlight and as well as lower inner lash line accent shades if you wanted to take a shimmer or a, a lighter matte to apply some contrast there and also really nice on the crease if you wanted to create cut crease looks but I think that's where this brush would shine because it has a little more movement at the tip and it's very light here so that's going to have a silkier feel so depending on how you like to apply your eyeshadow will determine which brush you would choose. I would say typically the dome shaped pencil brush is standard in many people's collections. It's just easy to use, great all around shape. Yes, with powder products and with uh, pencils, you can smudge and blend as you like. It feels soft on the eyes and I think overall a great design to be used by several makeup enthusiasts. And lastly, we have the Tonsedo eyeshadow set, a group of four. $100 for the set, so yes, it's not under 20, but you have four in one set. And if you just want one eyeshadow set of all shaders, listen, I love me a shader brush, especially when it comes in a bigger size like this. I know what you're thinking, one and done. One and done. Like a softer, silky powder, whether it's Suku, Surat, or even the recently released uh, Byrido Flora Kalahari palette. Those textures with this type of a brush 
match made in heaven. And those powders are soft enough where you don't need a stiffer brush to pick it up, right? So you pick up a powders like the, like the ones I just described and the way it just easily pulls across the lid without taking the skin with it. And of course, once you get the color on the lid, look at that swirl and twirl. Fantastic. Just swirl and twirl across the lid. You could take it on the lower lash line. If you want a smaller brush, you can bump down to the next size, take it on your lower lash line, maybe apply another color or more of a serving of the same shade on the lid. Perhaps you apply a little more color here on the outer lid. If you want an even smaller brush, then you go to the next size down. Fantastic. Perhaps more ideal for inner corner highlight, smudging across the lash line, more precise serving of color on the lower lash line and just more precise here for outer lid application if you wanted to introduce a darker color to your look and lastly we have the last size here now compared to the B shadow weasel brush this has a lot more movement than this brush here this brush is more stiff so that is the limitation you have more movement from this brush so you want a little more slide and glide in blending out your eye pencil whether it be on the top lid it could also be on the lower lid more precise application for a highlight here on the inner corner if you want to stamp something something here on the lower inner lash line again this set is comprehensive and Although it doesn't include a tapered brush like the one seen here, the fact that the bristles are soft, not super densely packed, you can still get your blend on for sure. You can still get your blend on in the same way you could get your blend on with a brush shaped like a teardrop. So that is it. Oof. Those are all the best-selling Fude brushes sold on FudeBeauty.com. Again, there are so many to choose from. We just wanted to present the ones that are best-selling in case you were curious, if you're wondering. All these are fantastic, but you don't need all of them. We just wanted to give you enough options for you to consider in terms of the bristle type, of the price, and the brush head design to help you choose what will be best for your makeup application experience if you feel like you're in a rut if all the makeup that you have haven't been applying it because you just don't like how it looks the brushes that you have need to be replaced but you have a budget and you don't want to spend your life savings on food day and if you feel well if it's not expensive it's not good enough now when it comes to japanese made brushes even if the bristle quality is not as top tier as let's say for instance gray squirrel versus goat goat hair is going to be less expensive however what doesn't change is the craftsmanship that is the constant so whether it's the gray squirrel bristles that are being bundled or the goat hair bristles that are being bundled they're all being hand bundled the ends of the bristles remain intact the shapes of all the brushes you saw in this video are determined by how the artisans bundle and lightly splice you still have that artisan and craftsmanship present in these brushes even if they're less expensive than like the the most high tier bristle brush you can have not necessary to still have a beautiful makeup application so i just want you to realize that you're not sacrificing quality if you're getting a 50 dollar powder brush versus a 150 dollar one and if you feel you need the more expensive one that's fine too it's just again to drive home the point that craftsmanship is not being sacrificed even these brushes here I use all the time and they're great for all makeup tasks and I switch and rotate a lot because I have so many brushes but the key thing is no matter what I pick up I can make it work and I think that security is what leads me to continue buying Japanese made brushes because the experience is consistent and no matter again which one I use to learn about the different brands to be exposed to different shapes and designs definitely elevates and amplifies my makeup experience and encourages me to paint it on more often. Let me know if you have any of these selections.
Rolex down below. And again, a huge thank you to Fude Beauty for sending these. I cleaned them last night, so I can't wait to use them now because I wanted to give you a fresh brush, unlike the dirty ones that I didn't clean because I used those. My apologies. Don't forget, if you want to enter any of the giveaways being hosted by Fude Beauty, check out those details down below in the description box. I will see you down in the comments, fam. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial food a extravaganza monthly favorites or vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon.